New this Saturday morning, the weather is warm and school is out, so chances are your child will be heading to the pool. And today we're talking about how to keep your family safe around water this summer. Joining us with some safety tips, Dr. Sarah Denny, the committee chair for the Injury Prevention Committee at the Ohio American Academy of Pediatrics. Doctor, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me on this morning. Uh, so, all right, so let's start with some of the stats on drowning. I think people are going to find this uh, a little shocking. Yeah, so injury is the, or I'm sorry, drowning is the second leading cause of injury death in kids. And the kids between zero and four are at the highest rate of drowning. This time of year, from May until August, we see the most amount of drowning rates. And actually, typically, we see them most on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, infants zero to one are more likely to die in the home, so in bathtubs, in buckets of water, toilets, and the kids older, one through four, one through five, are most likely to drown in residential swimming pools. It's really interesting, the younger ones, because we've had, unfortunately, a couple stories just recently mm -hmm. in the last couple weeks of drownings, and they were both close to home. Right. I think people sometimes associate these drownings in a public place, but uh, people have got to be careful watching in the backyard pool or even, as you pointed out, the bathtub in, inside the house. That's right. You know, the residential pools, the retention ponds, those are really common sites where we're seeing those little kids drown because if you think about them developmentally, they are walking now, so they're mobile, they're mm -hmm. curious, and then cognitively, they're just not aware of the fact that there's dangers with water, and so they, they just will wander off and then get into the water, and it only takes a, just a minute. Okay, so some tips to prevent all of this tragedy from right. happening. So number one, parent supervision. When you're near the pool, near any body of water with your child, you need to be actively engaged in watching them. If you're on your cell phone, you're checking Facebook, you're not watching them. It only takes a minute and um, you know terrible things can happen. So we want you actively engaged. We say touch supervision. So you need to be close enough that you can touch your small child in case that they're drowning. Uh, if you're near a boat, parents and children should be wearing their life jacket. I brought a couple life jackets here. Mm -hmm. These are um, approved by the uh, United States Coast Guard. So what you, age? You wanna, well, it's inside, it'll say the weight for oh, the child. Mm -hmm. So it's based on weight. Um, we know from studies that kids are much more likely to wear their life jacket if mom and dad are wearing their life jacket too. So mm -hmm. if you think about it in the car, you're not gonna drive and say, well, I'm gonna just put my seatbelt on right before I get in a car accident. That's not gonna be effective. So boating's the same way. You need to have your life jacket on as an adult and as um, the kids as well. What about the pool? The pool. So again, adult supervision is really important. Floaties, water wings, noodles, they're all really fun to play with, but those are not a water safety device. So we don't want parents to have a false sense of security. Um, swimming lessons are really, really important. We used to recommend kids four and older take swimming lessons, but now actually our guidelines say, really if they're developmentally ready, kids one to four can have um, reduction in their drowning rates if they take swimming lessons. And it's really helpful here for folks to learn CPR, right? I mean, that's just an added addition. Absolutely. I honestly think everyone should know CPR, but especially if you own a pool, you live near a pool, you frequent a pool, you want to be able to intervene if somebody um, is having a drowning situation. You want to be able to give life-saving care at the scene. Doctor, I think we should emphasize one more time on the Saturday morning that 30 seconds can be the difference of life and death. I mean, Absolutely. looking away mm -hmm. is even a bad idea Absolutely. when you have a child in a, in a water environment. Mm -hmm. And that's why we really recommend if you own a pool, put a four-sided fence around that pool. A lot of times you'll have a three-sided fence with the house acting as that fourth side but if someone leaves a door open and the little toddler wanders out then then you're gonna have a problem there. Dr. Sarah Denny, good to see you this Saturday morning. Great, thanks for having me on. Yeah, thank you.